Have you ever seen a plant breathe like we do? Inhale and exhale. If you've not seen a plant breathe, how do you know plants breathe then? Well, like we have lungs to breathe, plants also have specialized structures that help them exchange gas with the atmosphere. That's what we're going to learn today. In this video, we're going to talk about the different mechanisms different plants and animals use to breathe in air and breathe out air. You have to understand the distinction between respiration and breathing. Breathing is the process by which gas is exchanged with the environment and respiration is the process by which oxygen in most of the cases is used to produce energy by breaking down glucose. That is cellular respiration but the process by which the organisms take in oxygen and leave out carbon dioxide that is known as breathing. First we'll start with land plants. How do you think these plants breathe? Well, the answer lies on their leaves. The leaves of plants have tiny openings or pores known as stomata. In this image, you can see the tiny openings here. This is a stomata. Now, whenever this stomata is open, gas exchange takes place. And whenever it is closed, gas exchange does not take place. The opening and the closing of the stomata is regulated by these guard cells. But the stomatal pore is the actual opening through which gas exchange takes place. Now, what does gas exchange mean when it comes to plants? You know that for photosynthesis, plants need carbon dioxide, right? So, carbon dioxide from the environment has to enter the plants through the stomata. And then it is used to make up glucose. In the process, oxygen is released as a byproduct and the oxygen has to leave the plant. That also occurs through the stomata. So during photosynthesis, during the day when sunlight is present, carbon dioxide enters the plants through stomata and oxygen exits the plants through stomata. But when the plant has to respire, this takes place in the absence of sunlight and during the day as well. When the plant needs to use up the glucose that it has produced to produce energy, that is when oxygen is needed by the plant cells. Plants are also aerobic organisms, right? When respiration has to occur, oxygen enters the cells through the stomata, oxygen diffuses in through the stomata into the cells and the byproduct of cellular respiration is carbon dioxide, right? Carbon dioxide exits the plants out through the stomata. Now, not all carbon dioxide actually exits out. Some of the carbon dioxide is used up to make more glucose. So, this is the process by which plants perform gas exchange. The gases diffuse in and out through the stomatal pores. Why do you think the guard cells need to control the opening of the pores? Why do you think the pores need to be closed at times? Think about that. Next, we'll move on to underwater organisms. Where do underwater organisms get their oxygen from? If you've seen an aquarium, you might have noticed tiny bubbles emerging in the water. This shows that the water is being aerated or being pumped with air. That's because this is a small environment, the aquarium, and there is not much dissolved oxygen. That's why we need to pump in air in smaller aquariums. But when you think about the huge and the vast seas and oceans, the water itself has dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide. And this is what the underwater organisms use to perform cellular respiration. But the modes by which they take in oxygen and leave out carbon dioxide differs between different organisms. First, we'll start with aquatic plants. How do you think aquatic plants breathe? Do you think they also have stomata? Do you think it's even needed? Stomata are even needed in aquatic plants? Well, the answer is both yes and no. If it's a plant that floats on water, usually the top part of the leaves that is above the surface of the water, that will have stomata. And the stems that are under the water, they will not have stomata and only the top part of the leaves will be capable of performing gas exchange. But what about plants that are submerged inside the water? Like these plants, for example. How do you think they breathe? Well, these plants, the stems and leaves have specialized structures through which oxygen dissolved in the water can directly enter the plant and carbon dioxide can diffuse out 
for photosynthesis as well the plants use these specialized structures to take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen what about aquatic animals then animals don't need to take in carbon dioxide they need to take in oxygen and they leave out carbon dioxide how do animals do that let's start with simple animals like sponges and jellyfish sponges are simple multicellular animals that live under water in the case of sponges and animals like jellyfish they don't have lungs in fact even the fishes that you see like tuna or a uh, clownfish they don't have lungs how then do these animals breathe in the case of sponges the sponges have tiny pores on their surface through which water enters and the oxygen dissolved in water directly diffuses into the cells no fuss nothing else is required just simple diffusion of oxygen from the water into the cells similarly carbon dioxide that is produced as a result of respiration diffuses out of the cells into the water again no fuss pretty simple straightforward diffusion of gases when it comes to fishes there is still diffusion of gases but fishes have specialized structures especially on their sides known as gills and gills are like slits or opening on the surface of the fish and the water enters the fish's body through these gills and within the gills oxygen diffuses out of the water into the fish's body and carbon dioxide diffuses out of the fish's body into the water and when the water leaves the gills it takes up all the carbon dioxide with it that's how fishes breathe now this is just for fishes not for mammals that live under water like dolphins or even whales for example they don't use gills they have lungs to breathe but fishes have gills to breathe now let's move on to land organisms how do land organisms breathe we just saw a while back how land plants breathe right what about land animals simple land animals like earthworms leeches etc they also don't have lungs they have a moist skin they breathe through their skin directly so oxygen diffuses directly into the cells from the atmosphere and carbon dioxide produced diffuses directly out of the cells because of this direct diffusion earthworms and leeches they cannot survive if the environment is not moist if the environment is dry like without water basically they cannot survive because the skin needs to be moist so that it can absorb the gases so that oxygen can diffuse in and carbon dioxide can diffuse out animals like frogs also can breathe through their skins the skin of frogs is also moist and they can also breathe through their skin but they also have lungs this ability of frogs to breathe through skin and lungs is what helps them survive both under water in aquatic conditions and in terrestrial or land conditions this is a feature of almost all amphibians right they can survive in both land and water when we continue talking about land animals there are still animals that don't have lungs cockroaches grasshoppers and other insects for example they also don't have lungs they have specialized tubes running through their body known as spiracles the spiracles have entry points at the bottom side of the surface usually tiny openings here tiny holes here through which air enters the body and once air has entered the body oxygen diffuses directly into the cells and tissues and whatever carbon dioxide is produced that diffuses directly out of the cells again out through the spiracles so these spiracles are seen in insects like cockroaches grasshoppers mosquitoes etc finally we can talk about lungs i've been talking about how animals don't have lungs and how they have other mechanisms to breathe right but a lot of animals like we have lungs to breathe and lungs are usually situated in the chest region of the animals and they are in a pair so we have a pair of lungs and the lungs is the structure that helps in gas exchange in humans and other animals like birds dolphins like i said dolphin is an aquatic mammal right but it still uses lungs to breathe and not gills dogs cats tigers lions breathe through their lung and how do lungs work we have a pair of nostrils basically your nose through which air enters the body and it passes through the different parts of the respiratory system and reaches the lungs in the lungs you have air sacs known as alveoli 
and alveoli are the sites of gas exchange at the alveoli oxygen from the lung is picked up by the blood and carbon dioxide from the blood is picked up by the lungs and is eventually exhaled out we'll learn more about the mechanism of breathing and the different parts of the respiratory system in humans in other videos